Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead Brooklyn and I am here in my home. Finally, if any of you have been following along on my Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn, then you'll know that for three months my house has been under construction. It's been harrowing to say the least and the construction is not finished, but I had to actually start working again and doing things. So I ended up having to get the construction workers out of my house and I repainted a lot of the walls and everything. So we hadn't done a house tour since like last year. And I know a lot of you have been asking post construction to do a proper house tour. So that is why I'm here today. So thanks again for all your requests for this. I think it's so much fun doing a house tour and finally my house is back in order so I could actually take you through it. So let's begin. here in my kitchen. It's one of my favorite rooms in my house. And if you remember from last year, I just had gotten this Talavera backsplash, which I really love. Um, I am a renter, so I don't own this place. And the Talavera along with other things are actually removable, even though it doesn't look like it's removable. But you'll probably recognize some of these plants um, from last year. They are literally overgrowing into my sink and I'm about to leave on a trip. So I think I'm just probably going to leave these here because I'm not gonna be really washing dishes. Although I particularly love washing dishes between these plants. This is a Schefflera actinophila nova, which I really love for the palmate leaf shape. And I have it right next to here, which is a Pachira aquatica variegata. And this one I love, I don't love variegation on all plants, but this one in particular, I think is really attractive. It has almost a little bit more like these white flecks, um, white silvery kind of flecks versus anything that's too splotchy. Then you'll see down here, I have some peperomias. I have this beautiful um, philodendron, SIBO blue, um, some ascissus here, which is really fleshy a really fleshy succulent, and then rabbit's foot fern here. I have this little stem right here is a Trevisia palmata, which also has these really beautiful palmate leaves. It does not have any leaves right now. It actually got hit with spider mites, unfortunately. And then as I got that under control and the, uh, the leaf was emerging, I ended up knocking it off because it is kind of in the way of my uh, dishwashing here. <laughs> So, um, but the stem is really fleshy and it's very strong and the roots are great. So I'm not going to obviously toss the plant out. Sometimes it just kind of needs its own time in order to be able to grow again. So I have hope, hope that it'll put out another leaf. If you look up here in this little corner, I have this beautiful orchid, which is actually in bloom right now, but it's okay when it's not in bloom because you'll see that the leaves are just really beautiful. Paps and Phalaenopsis are really nice to have indoors. And then I have this one, it's looking a little um, crusty on the edges. This is a Signonium pink splash. And then this is a Ludicia discolor, which is a type of jewel orchid. This one's grown quite a lot since I've had it. So I have some plants kind of growing here. Um, this is a coleus. A lot of people have asked me about this. It's a type of Plectranthus and you could get coleus in so many different shades. Uh, this one is kind of a little bit more a ruddy color with green and they take extremely well to being cut back. They typically are more of a plant that you'd see in flower beds or maybe on windowsill gardening, but they are totally underrated as a house plant indoors. Um, you'll see that I actually took one here. This is a cutting that I did from the tip and you can see that it roots up very easily. These are one of the easiest plants to actually take root and you could just go ahead and plant this up, you know, anywhere. And um, this, there's one right here that I actually cut back already. It's another type of Plectranthus. This is a Cuban sage. And I cut this back pretty heavily because it was, you know, basically falling down and I had to, to cut it back. So that one will probably grow back very easily. Tradescantia right here, another really um, great trailing plant. And 
you'll also see if you just look up and go up here to the Hoya, this is a Hindu rope Hoya and also a reverse rope. And you'll see it's, one is variegated, variegated on one side, the other one's not. Uh, and these are beautiful plants, very slow growing, but very gorgeous leaves. The whole back of this is obviously filled with plants. I have um, a Raphidophora cryptantha, which is, I think would probably grow extremely well if I had a sphagnum pole for it. I do not though, so it's just growing on the wall right now. And I have some really interesting peperomias. This is a peperomia. If you looked at the uh, video that I did of bringing in plants from the Netherlands, this is actually one of the ones that I've done extremely well and I'm not even sure the species name of this and then this is Peperomia Hope which is a type of cultivar and I have some different orchids and Ledborea this is another type of Plectranthus some succulents which actually do okay I mean this is a northeast window so I typically don't put a lot of my succulents in here but for the most part they do well but they don't grow like crazy like I do in my southwest facing window Anthurium up here, Anthurium scandens, which I think got hit by a little bit of thrip, so that might, might be what you see on its leaves, but it actually fruited for me this year, so I actually took its fruits. Um, it has a seed on the inside, and the fruit is pretty fleshy on the outside, so you have to clean off that flesh. And then I actually planted some of those seeds in my biopod, which I'll show you. I don't know if they'll take root or not, but pretty excited about whether that might actually happen. And then um, on this side, you'll see I have like my Euphorbia milii here, which is, you know, gives a type of latex sap and has these thorns that look similar to a cacti, though it's not in the cacti family. And I have different types of Peperomia and Aeschcananthus right here, zebra basket vine it's called, and a Peperomia tetragona. Parallel Peperomia. Really cool things over here. Another Euphorbia and another Schefflera actinophila nova. Part of my countertop, again, this is a new addition, the countertop, uh, I think I had it from last year, but I can't remember. Um, but what you'll see here is this used to actually be my old stove top, and I turned it into a sub-irrigated planter, so you'll see philodendron mexicanum here, and then uh, this other philodendron here, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, but it's a type of cultivar. It has kind of splotchier leaves, and I have those two kind of growing in there. Hard sometimes to kind of turn them, because they like to get turn their faces to the sun, so sometimes I have to kind of rotate them um, in, inside their container. This is again another coleus, another type of plectranthus. You could see it has different kinds of coloration. And this was a cutting that I took from a windowsill box, and it just grows extremely well indoors. Curry leaf, uh, bromeliads, a, you know, aglionema, some more peperomia hope. There's a lot of cool things here in the, the little corner pocket. These are great windows, um, northeast aspect I've found grows wonderful types of plants. Um, north is usually a little bit on the dark side, but with that eastern exposure, it gives such gentle light throughout the year. Um, if you look up here, this is a, a, a beautiful philodendron that uh, it's kind of, I think it's called green dragon or something of that nature. It's a type of cultivar. And then I have some Signoniums right here, and of course an Epiprenum, um, a, a type of Pothos, uh, and a Monstera up that way. And uh, this was the plant that actually used to be right next to my sink, so I had to move it because it was getting too large, and that's just a recurring thing. Sometimes there's plants that die back, sometimes there's plants that increase in size and you actually have to kind of move them. The other thing that's actually new is you have to like look up because I have new poles up here and I have actually started to hang a bunch of my plants 
up this way. So you'll see some epiphyllums here. This is a rickrack cactus, um, epiphyllum inguigular, it's called. And there's some other epiphyllums up there, some pothos, uh, a monstera carstiana, but it's not called a carstiana. They call it just monstera spa peru, and some philodendrons and a maranta over here, which actually I notice has um, a little bit of mealy bugs. So I have to kind of deal with that before I leave. So typically what I do with mealy bugs is that I'll spray like a neem or a horticultural soap. First I'll get it with sharp sprays of water, then I'll do the neem or the horticultural soap, and then I'll let that sit for a little bit, and then I'll actually bring in green lace wings. So I actually have an order of green lace wings coming in next week, so I'm going to actually release them in the house and let them do their job while I am away. I've hung new plants up on my uh, sled hanger up here, and you'll see that this is a gorgeous philodendron right here. And it has a lot of aerial roots, so this tells me that this is something that it wants to cling. But it also is a beautiful hanging plant. But if, it, if I actually put it on a sphagnum pole, I bet you any money that the leaves would just morph and get a heck of a lot larger. I've also changed this over into a cissus. And this cissus just spreads very beautifully. I absolutely love cissus. I actually have so much more in my house. And then I have a philodendron pink princess right here. You'll see that some of the leaves got mangled. That was compliments of my bird, Kippy, eating the leaves. So I ended up like putting it up to a place where she can't actually get it because she likes to munch on tons of leaves. And I learned to actually pull some of my plants up. Even though she's not in the house 24 seven, she does come in at night and she still likes to munch on leaves. That's what chickens do. So I'm going to just pull this out and show it to you so you can get a closer look at it. My little Calathea white fusion, a Pilea, Piscia. This is the Cissus amazonica, which I think is a really nice attractive leaf. It has kind of purplish undersides. This is really common with the Cissus. They get these little, like, little sandy type things underneath the leaf. Pipers get that as well. And then some philodendrons. It's got a beautiful glossy sheen. Some peperomia, zebra plants back there. There's a lot of cool things in here. This, this is my vertical swing garden that I built with my father. I actually have a whole how-to on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Sometimes I actually put the more long form how to's and things like that on my blog. It was very easy to build comparatively to some other things, but you'll see a lot of the same plants in here. I think I might've changed out a couple, um, but this has been here forever. This is a Stephanotis. This is a Hawaiian wedding vine. And you'll see that it has literally clambered and climbed all its way up to the top and probably is now hitting the ceiling. This is a Tenanthi. I'm seeing some leaf curl. It probably needs a little bit more water this morning, but um, this has been here for, for quite some time. This one might be new. It's a type of Syngonium. This had a little bit of a mealy bug infestation, but I actually got it under control. And this one is absolutely a beautiful one that I got from Steve's Leaves. It's a Philodendron Burl Marxii, and you could see that it has just grown in leaps and bounds. Moving down here, you'll um, see uh, Calathea, uh, which is a type of, uh, it's called rattlesnake Calathea, uh, Peperomia metallica. This one is new. Look at how this epiphyllous structure right here, it's like leaves growing on top of leaves. This is a begonia, they get huge. I did a begonia tour at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden and I saw this and they had a massive one and I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. There is really a begonia for everybody. I think begonias are also a little underrated because we think about them as like grandma's plants or whatever, but there is a begonia for everyone. I particularly like the succulent ones. 
I'm gonna show you a begonia venosa. I actually have one in flower in my southwest facing window. This is a much more succulent variety. It kind of has this downy um, fur on top of its leaves and it's really an exquisite specimen. You'll see a larger one when I take you into uh, my workroom. And another calathea, another philodendron over here. And then you'll see in my window, I have a lot of different types of terrariums. And you'll see some oxalis, my watermelon peperomia, a dracaena goldiana, and some asparagus ferns, some apicias. And you'll see some of this stuff growing in glass because I found that when you're growing in glass in like a terrarium condition, you are kind of like the plant is like almost taking care of itself much more easily. I'm a little bit more hands off when things are growing in terrariums, which is a positive thing if you are somebody who travels a lot or if you're forgetful with your plants, growing more in a terrarium condition could actually benefit you because a lot of that moisture, which is the plants like bread and butter, so to speak, is kept within the glass container and the, the plant is allowed to uptake a little, the water more readily and also keep in that humidity as well. So you can see that this is more of my succulent terrarium over here. And then you'll see some of this oxalis, which I have to change around all the time because um, you know the, these leaves actually get pressed up to the glass. And so I have to rotate this often, but the shock of color is just absolutely beautiful. This is my Dracaena goldiana, very slow grower. I mean, you have to be patient with this one, but I love it for its leaf coloration and its markings. And just to the left of that is my uh, watermelon peperomia, which again, it has these kind of peltate leaves, which mean they're a little bit more shield shape with the petiole kind of affixing to the back. And then my Senecio macroglossus, it's a variegated form. So you'll see some white leaves in there. And if you go down here, you'll see some more of my collection of begonias and peperomias and some more stuff within the terrarium. And then as you pan over, you'll see an asparagus fern and you'll see some birds sitting out there because I started feeding the birds some bird seed. <laughs> and now I get like lots of birds outside, which is amazing. And um, you'll see peperomia jamesoniana right here, which is another beautiful peperomia. And this is an apicia that's kind of growing out of the terrarium now. Really cool leaves. Actually one of the easier houseplants to grow. 